The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 26th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on at 877-927-6648. Now, if you got a question but you can't dial in, Stevie's got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject, can you please put radio show question? And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with a mixed bag. Seems to be the uh, soup du jour of the uh, week, last week as well. You've got the trannies that are up 270 points. NASDAQ, one, uh, NASDAQ is up 20 points. NASDAQ 100 is off four. Uh, Dow's off 68. S&P is down nine. Uh, the Russell's off eight points. Uh, semis are down 40. Gold's off 20 bucks. Silver just turned slightly positive. So did lights we crude. Natural gas is off six pennies, trading out of 279. 30-year treasuries trading out of 119. That's off a buck and it's off one point and five ticks out there our leader in the clubhouse to the upside it is fedex so that's uh, certainly driving or part that's driving the uh, trannies out there 37.50 a 15 percent move that's a big move broadcom is up 12 bucks that's a little less than one percent the bank of montreal up 13 bucks three percent mon god brr, whatever that is up five percent it's up nearly 12 bucks and broadcom avgo that's up by uh, 12 dollars as well that's up nearly one percent whirlpool i think Yesterday was to the downside. To, no, there was pool that was to the downside. Today it's whirlpool that's to the upside, up about ten bucks. To the downside, it's super microcomputer, a twenty dollar move, two and a half percent. United Rentals fourteen bucks, two percent. HubSpot fourteen bucks, two and a half percent. Asimil Holdings thirteen bucks, one percent. O'Reilly Automotive down eleven. That's a one percent move there. Uh, so what do we want to take a look at? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go update the uh, charts. I was able to post this in the, in the den this morning uh, to just simply be a warning that uh, expect and anticipate a bounce or a bottom. How did Stevie come up with that? So hopefully folks were able to pay attention to that. If we go take a look at what uh, was going on at that moment in time, and this is the first time I've seen this, quite frankly, at least in weeks. And what I'm referring to is where I have all four charts for a time frame that are confirming the same signal. And that's a beautiful thing, as Tom likes to say. If we take a look at the ES Mini, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000, each for their 30-minute time frame, what were they doing? They were forming that beautiful TD9 count bottom. Now, what do we know about bottoms and tops out there? All they're really going to do, in this case here, bottom, is at least push price up to resistance. And where's our first level of resistance? Well, Depends where the profile levels are at, but most certainly it is that oscillator and change line out there. In fact, when we made that call, we didn't have those new profiles to my uh, to, to my, uh, my my recollection out there. But we can see if you take a look at the ES Mini, it got right up to both of those levels. Both those levels being the top of its profile at 55.33 and its oscillator and change line. Now, the cool thing here is the ES Mini is pulling back right now. It's testing its bullish structured 30-minute profile on a 30-minute basis. It priced close and below the TD9 count on the on the 30-minute time frame. That low is 55.18. Price has to close below that. 
out there. It negates that signal and tells us about a further move to the downside. We'll go take a look at the other uh, intraday charts out there, see what kind of signals we have. But right now, as we speak, what the ES Mini is doing, it is testing a strong, what should be a strong area of support. So if it breaks that, it breaks that TD9 count, well, then it's delivered its message to us. The strong area of support on the 30-minute time frame chart is between 55, good Lord, I can hardly read that. 55.23 and 55.33. No, it can't be. 55.20 and 55.23. Those are the numbers out there. If we take a look at the NQ, same pattern out here. It had a TD9 count bottom. What did price do? Rallied right up into the top of its resistance level at 21.13, as well as its oscillator and change line. It's key level to be watching on a 30-minute basis. That means a close at 11.30. If we see a close below... 19901. Well, first, that's going to trigger an A to B equals CD pattern downside. The same thing for the 30 minute time frame charts out there. So, we'll want to watch those lows. We take a look at the Dow, which has been the weakest indice out here. It formed a TD9 count bottom. It completed that pattern at 10 a.m. Price rallied right up, really, quite frankly, it rallied above its oscillator and change line. And that was uh, during this. Um, 11 o'clock session here as we we're coming on the air and price ran into resistance right at the top of its profile. Where's its key level? Well, that profile's got support at 39.323, but the key level to be watching is 39.306. That's the low of this TD9 count pattern. If price, in fact, closes below that low, then we're headed south. And in the case of the Russell 2000, also a TD9 count bottom. Price run into resistance at that oscillator and change line. A close below its TD9 count bottom. Let me just move this over to the side. That low out here is 20 26 50 and the markets continue to head south out there so we'll continue we'll come back and we'll check in on this es mini uh, chart out here right now we can see that td9 count bottom is being tested out there and at 11 30 we'll know whether that has been rejected or if that's signaling to you and i lower price if we go switch over and take a look at the daily equity future contracts out here because if those levels break and i, and I haven't put in the a to b equal cd patterns we're just going to simply move straight over and take a look at the daily equity future contracts why because if those TD9 count bottoms fail, regardless of an A to B equals CD pattern that we might be able to generate or put on that 30-minute time frame chart, the ES Mini would say, you know what, maybe I'm going to go test support. And support there is at 54.93. If you take a look at the NQ, as we mentioned earlier, support is at 19.802. In the case of the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, price right now is actually testing support, its first level of support, and that's its green oscillator and change line. If price were to close below that on a daily basis as well, then we would suggest we see a further move lower. That further move lower could take us to 38,900. And finally, when we take a look at the Russell 2000, Russell 2000 has a buy the D point pattern. That buy the D point pattern, the most recent one, formed back here with that bullish piercing candle, that was on June 17th. And we can see that that oscillator and change line continues to act as strict resistance. So if you ever see a close above that, that tells you something. That tells you about a rally up to the 2082-29 level. Right now, and if the Russell 2000 on that 30-minute basis uh, uh, takes out that TD9 count bottom, we should see a move lower to test that by the D-point pattern, and that would be a move down to the 2015-20 level out there. So we got TD9 count bottoms. Will they hold as they're being tested, at least the ES Mini coming into the 1130 time frame? Well, we'll know 17 minutes from now. We've got a couple of requests that are in. Why don't we get to those, and then we'll have time to surf around and take a look at other charts like the U.S. dollar index. Uh, there was a question that came in that said, why am I the only one that isn't concerned with gold and the U.S. with the, with, uh, the US dollar index rallying? Am I not worried that gold's going to tank? We'll take a look at that. We'll get back to the screen. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, uh, Carol wrote in last night asking me the question, why am I not concerned that the uh, with gold with regard to the U.S. dollar rallying out here? And really, it's not me. It's the chart patterns out here, Carol. So if we take a look at those chart patterns, the top portion of this chart is the U.S. dollar index. It's set to a weekly time frame just to get rid of some of the noise. And this is a line chart, so it's based on the close of the uh, of the week out there. If we take a look at the uh, second panel, that's the S&P 500. I know you didn't ask about that. The third panel is uh, gold out there. And so that uh, yellow vertical line, that is January 1st, 2024. And what you can see out here, so it's not me that's worried or has to worry. Well, all we have to do is take a look at the chart patterns. What do we see out here? U.S. dollar index has been rising since January 1. So too has the S&P 500 and so too is Goldilocks. That's the only answer that I can give you is just take a look at the charts. Don't get caught up in the theories. Sometimes those theories or correlations become unglued. And I'd have to say in this case here, they absolutely have. So I hope that answers your cast, your question out there, and thanks much for writing in. Let's go ahead and uh, switch over to our white background charts and go to a question coming in from Nicholas this morning. And Nicholas is asking about uh, Carnival Cruise Line out here. So let's go take a look at it. I don't have that chart up on my screen, but we will momentarily. We'll switch over to it. And now we've got CCL. So Nicholas is asking the question. He's looking for resistance because he's in calls. Nicholas? You had that resistance level uh, just a few minutes ago. Where is that resistance level? It's at 1834. Well, you didn't hit it exactly, but you came awfully close. Let me see. What did we get up to? Eight. Uh, we got up to 1832. Two pennies away from that level. Now, that's resistance on a weekly time frame. I have no idea whether price can take that out. But you're in a call position. So I don't know how many calls you have, but you could or should consider closing those out, knowing that you're up against resistance there. If you ask me about the daily time frame, well, the daily time frame says, Steve-O, I don't know what you're talking about as far as resistance. Instead, I've got an A to B equals C 
CD pattern to the upside. So let's go take a look at that price projection in here. We start with the A point, which is down at April 16th. We move all the way up to that letter D. Basil Chapman's uh, part of his toolbox out there. What does Basil tell us? When you get to wave number four, expect something different. That's, in fact, what we saw here in Carnival Cruise Line. Now let's go ahead and copy and paste that A to B equals CD. Let's take that over here. And so in the daily time frame chart, price has attained the one-to-one -one level. Does that mean it's a sell? It absolutely does not. In fact, if you take a look at this C to D leg, that's the one on the right-hand side, and you look at where price is uh, trading at, it's telling us that this wants to move to higher ground. Even though that's what it's telling us, if you were to see a bearish reversal candle, then you would want to go ahead and close out that position for sure because that would be telling you about a retracement back to support, and support right now is at 1681. That is that daily oscillator and change line. So the daily looks very positive, but it has to respect the weekly resistance level out there. Um, I have no idea, again, whether that will take it out. Nothing looks bad on the monthly time frame chart. So use those numbers. Use that data. Um, if I take a look at an intraday chart as an example, when we hit a resistance level, typically you would find some type of topping signals on those intraday charts. What do we have out here? We don't have a topping signal. We've got a Rhodes momentum indicator pattern that's present, but that needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm the top. So the 30 minutes says I want to continue to move higher. How about that 65 minute chart? Now the oscillator and change line here is going to be on the 30 minute so we won't pay attention to that you've got a failed td9 count top price trading above it's a uh, uh, bearish structured profile that is bullish out there so no topping signal there let's take a look at the 130 minute time frame chart what do we have we are in bar number eight uh, this bar number eight here is going to complete at 11:40. at about 12:45, you should go ahead and confirm a td9 count and then at about 12:45, 150 uh this pattern uh should complete out there. So that's an 130 minute time frame. So, you know, I've given you about as much as I can provide to you. You'd love to see price uh, start moving above that 1834 level. Uh, so, um, you know, would I do anything right now? I'd make sure that I've got some kind of a stop or some level there where it would make sense for you to go ahead and close out that position. So, price is at resistance. We are in day number seven to the upside of consecutive moves higher out there. So, it's telling us about a pattern that is getting relatively stretched. How did I figure that out? I've got another chart on a different screen that shows me what those consecutive moves higher and lower are. So, Nicholas, thanks so much for writing in and have a wonderful Wednesday. Our next request coming in from Snowball inside the Tiger's Den. And Snowball wants to take a look at ticker symbol ATRO. That's what we've got up on our screen out here. And we've got ATRO, which is the uh, Astronics Corp out there. Uh, what do we have? So here's what I can share with you for sure on the daily time frame, the weekly time frame, and the monthly time frame. Let's start with the monthly. What is that? We take a look at the monthly time frame. You had a beautiful TD nine count top out there. And what did price do? It took itself right back to that oscillator and change line. I know you hear me say this ad nauseum out there, but I just have to say it, repeat it, because it is such a cool tool. You want to learn that tool for sure, and I can certainly teach you that. Just simply uh, subscribe to Mastering Probability. I've got a full workshop on that. We well, take a look at what ATRO did on the monthly time frame snowball, pulled back, tested that support level. So now what we've got is more of a neutral signal. I'd say neutral to bullish. Why would it be neutral to bullish TV on the monthly time frame. Now that's an excellent question. The reason is because price is trading above a green oscillator and change line tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero and price is trading above the top of its profile at 1868. So longer term, this is suggesting to you and I that price wants to go tackle that monthly TD9 count top. On a weekly time frame, what does this have? Well, we don't have a topping pattern. We got a rose momentum indicator signal, no bearish reversal candle. Regardless, what did price do? pulled back and tested support. So support is held on the weekly time frame, that being 1763. It is also traded above the top of its profile. It is also traded above its green oscillator and change line. So for the intermediate intermediate term time frame this says it wants to move higher now to the daily the daily has a td9 count top price pulled all the way back to where it broke out from which was 1830 you did have one day below that level but you had a couple of different hammer candles a bullish engulfing this is telling us snowball that the buyers or the bulls at least are lined up 
at that area out there, area, let's just call it the 1763-ish zone. Now what you'd like to see, we have not had two consecutive days of closes above the top of its profile. The top of the profile out here, we had one day, and then we that was two days ago. Yesterday, it pulled back and closed underneath it. So it's struggling to figure out what it wants to do. The key level there is going to be the 1953. If you can close above 1953 for two consecutive sessions, then what you're likely to see out here is a move to 2161. Now, it's very possible that yesterday's low was the a C point of an A to B equals CD pattern. So let's go ahead and draw that in there. I don't know if it is. We won't know if it is until price closes above the B point, and that would require a close above 2009. But let's go take a look at that possibility and see what its price projection would be if, in fact, you get that close. And that's really what the monthly and the weekly chart are communicating to us. And this here would give you a one-to-one -one that would take you right up to the TD9 count breakdown level, 2161. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, ATR Oh, Snowball, if you're in this trade, I would stay in this trade out there. You got to love how the tops took price right back to support and each of them held. We come back from this breakout here. We're going to go take a look at SMCI for Nicholas, NNE for Dude, LTBR for Dan, GEO for Dude, Wood for Tom C. And of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. Steve at TFN.com or give us a call 877-927-6648. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, 
you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Hey, before we go to SMCI, the 1130 bell has rung. And so I brought us back to those uh, TD9 count 30 minute charts here for the ESNQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. And if we live and buy by the sword, what do we know? Well, we know that price was unable to bust it to the downside. So what's that tell us? It should bust it to the upside. Now, I'm not saying that price is going to take out resistance, but price should make another run for resistance. Inside the ES Mini, that's between 55.31 and 55.33. In the NQ, that's at about the 11.986 to 20.013 level. In the case of the Dow, if you can clear the resistance level at the top of its profile, that's at 39.463. We're looking to move to 39.538. And inside the Russell 2000, the resistance level here, at least the first one, is at 2039. You clear 2039, it has smooth sailing up to the 2045 level. So that's what's going on with those 30-minute time frame charts. Let me go ahead and close those out and uh, free up the resources. And let's go back and take a look at SMCI for Nicholas out there. So give me a moment. Obviously, these are not the charts. We can go back and take a look at these charts, but uh, right now let's take care of the request line. And so we take a look at SMCI, Nicholas, out here. What we have is price rallied three or four days ago. Last week, it looks like up into its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. That was after forming that TD9 count bottom. You got to love that TD9 count pattern, folks. Please learn it. Please learn it. Look, if you're trading for daily and weekly, you don't have to worry about it. It's very easy to identify and make those notations on your charts. Intraday, you know, it's nicer to have a tool uh, like I've got here that just simply automatically calculates things for us. So now what do we know? Couldn't bust it down. Couldn't bust it up. Now, right now, what is pro what is price doing? It's testing profile support. So that first profile level of support is at 813.28. If price closable, 813.28, odds favor move down to test that TD9 count bottom and that would be anywhere between the range of 741.22 and 806.05 out there that's what's going on in the daily time frame we take a look at that weekly time frame you've got a td9 count top out there prices rallied for the last many weeks out here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh ten weeks and on three different occasions, price has gotten up to the oscillator and change line. And by the end of the week, it rejected that level. And I say rejected it, it continues to act as resistance. So on a rally, uh, Nicholas, you've got 972.31. You've got uh, in price not getting the only way you're going to get a suggestion that price is going to make a move up to that level was clearing the weekly oscillator and change line currently at 930 on a monthly time frame. We've got a road momentum indicator top and price longer term should get back and test that oscillator and change line. At what price level will that be on a monthly time frame? Very hard to say right now that price level is 652 and change. Is that where I'm saying price is headed to? No, that's not where I'm saying price is headed to. I'm saying price is headed back to that oscillator and change line. I on a monthly basis over time. So watch the bottom of that profile today. You get a close below that, we're likely to head back towards that TD9 count bottom. And Nicholas, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Dude wrote in through the Tiger Sam. Let's take a look at ticker symbol NNE out there. So let's go take a look at this. Wow, TD9 count top on the daily time frame is going to form today. That is, unless it falls off the cliff, this is nanonuclear. So if there is a nuclear, thermonuclear weapon that uh, ignites today, this thing will not form a TD9 count top, and that would really require a close below 1522, you're 2231. So odds favor, dude, you've got a TD9 count top on the daily time frame. This is not traded for long enough. You can see there's nothing on the weekly or monthly for us to really pay attention to, barely on the daily time frame. But those TD9 counts certainly help us out. So where's price going to pull back to? Look, this is traded for such little time, I can't even get an oscillator and change line reading on that. Why? Because I need 39 sessions at a minimum in order for that to unfold. We don't have that out there. So the only thing that I can say 
today as prices likely to pull back even further and uh, what's its target without an asset and change then i'll say the target 795 or 2250 i'm not saying that's where it's going to head to i'm just saying let's go probably to intraday charts okay let's go to intraday charts stevie what's a 65 minute time frame chart telling us i don't know let's open it up and find out turns out the 65 minute chart likes td9 count patterns as well Formed a TD9 count top, does it at 1140. Now price is testing the first level of support, which is its uh, bullet, well, let's just say the bottom of its profile, 2121. So, dude, if we see a close on a 65 minute time frame below 2121, we're headed to 1411. Let's go take a look at the 30 minute time frame out here. What do we have here for NNE, that nano nuclear energy out there? Well, it's got a TD9 count bottom. How about that? That formed out here at 11 a.m., well, completed at 1130. So, just five minutes ago so what you're going to want to watch here price should rally up towards that oscillator and change on a 2850 and if it can't do that it just simply continues lower and it takes out that td9 count bottom that would be a close blow 2059 that would tell you about a strong momentum move to the downside and that would take us into that 1324 level so that's what i see when we take a look at the nano nano out there and i hope that that helps you out you also had a request to take a look at geo so let's go ahead and get those charts fired up on our screen out here Give me a moment. We should have GEO, which is the GEO group. Is that the, uh, that's the uh, group that uh, runs the, uh, the penitentiaries, I believe, across the globe. Uh, I yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Used to play golf with the uh, CEO. We retired a couple of years ago uh, there. So if we take a look at Geo, what it's doing, you didn't really care about that side story. But if we take a look at it, um, and Dave, what a great golfer he is. Fun guy from Kentucky. And anyway, out here, if we take a look at the uh, top of that profile, 1390 is your resistance level out there. So we're trading with inside a bullish structured profile. Price tested that level today. So far, it has rejected it. Does that mean it's going to turn down from here? No, that's not necessarily what it means. It means price got up to where those sellers were at and those sellers fired away if we take a look at the uh, and we have out here what do we have looks like that td9 count bottom pattern was negated uh get that local thing out there was it um no, it was not. So you had a TD9 count bottom. It took you all the way back to May 15th. That had volume of 3.9 million shares. And that was tested and rejected with 4 million shares. Interestingly, well, you know what? The very next day, it sort of tests that area again out there, but it doesn't matter. We're outside of that swing point. We're inside this bullish structured profile. A weekly time frame chart is trying to get back inside its profile. It all needs to close on Friday above 1342. You do have a TD9 count on monthly. So Geo is a bit cautious. This is a bit of a caution, a caution stock out here right now. Why? Because you got that monthly TD9 count. It says over time, price should target that oscillator and change line. I don't know where that level is going to be on the monthly chart, but right now it's at 1131. So what you want to do is if price is unable to close above 1342, and we already yesterday was the second day below that, so maybe we're just looking at a little bit of a counter trend move out here, and if price closed below 1342 at week's end, that's really suggesting to you and I price moved down to 1097. And maybe Maybe that's what that's really telling us because that swing point, that TD9 count bottom from May 15th was uh, um, tested with volume. So, dude, I hope that it helps you out. When we get back from this break out here, we're going to go take a look at LTBR for Dan, Wood for Tom C, HRTX for McGuppy, and I've got room for more requests out there. You just have to send them in. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey. You've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. 
All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got the uh, Dow off 44, S&P's down 9, NASDAQ 100 off 7, Russell's down 8. Those trending still up 253 points. NASDAQ Composite is up 16. Gold's off 20 bucks out there. We're taking a look at the L. TBR, that is Lightbridge Corporation out there. And the question posed to me is, where's the sell? <clears throat> okay, so look at that wide-ranging bar this thing is having today. That is a, a beautiful thing. And that wide-ranging bar, Dan, is, uh, I'm just going to try to pull this back, see if I see anything out there other than a swing point. Really not much. So what this is doing is this is uh, taking out its weekly TD9 count breakdown level. And that's at 364. I'll assume it's going to close there come uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday as well. So that says it wants to move higher. Move higher to where? Well, Dan, we take a look at that monthly time frame chart, which is also going to close on Friday. So let's assume we're really asking about what's this going to do on Friday. And if on Friday price closes above 410, we're at three, uh, 430 right now. If it closes above 410, uh, one, you're not going to have a TD9 count bottom. So that's out of the question out here. In order to have a TD9 count bottom form, you'd have to see a pretty major pullback uh, in the next couple of days because price would have to close below 283. So we don't have that as a bottom pattern out there. Uh, well, take a look at that sideways move out here. So we take a look at LTBR, a close above 410 would suggest a run up to 576. Now it's a monthly time frame. It doesn't mean it's going to do it in a day or two days or 10 days, what have you. But that would really be the next price projection level. Let me turn on this chart here it's just so I can, uh, it's not the chart is on. Let me turn on an indicator uh, right there. Let me just uh, make an adjustment to an existing indicator. And that's that TD9 count. So let me uh, change this to uh, three uh, bars out here. Okay, so we've got really two levels that I can provide to you. One is 516. That's a that's the next TD9 count breakdown resistance level on the weekly time frame. And then you've got that 576 area. So it looks to me, you're asking me, where is the cell? Dan, I think it's right there. Let's see if we got anything on a... Uh, 
on a because those are going to be the consecutive third consecutive days to the upside. Last time we saw mostly this has had three days, two or three days of the upside. So the last time we had that was out here on May 21st, and that price started pulling back. So just be aware of that. What you're really being aware of is you're looking for that to not be the case. You're looking for this to go on to bar number four. Uh, that would be on Thursday. And uh, what you'd really love to see is a fifth consecutive uh, move to the upside in the daily time frame. Why? Because when you get five consecutive moves in one direction, it typically, not always, it typically tells us about a change in trend. And this has been a trend to the downside. And it looks like that trend is over. So I'm going to go with 516 right now, Dan. I hope that that helps you out. And uh, that was to take a look at retracements or anything along those lines. You've got that under control. You don't need Stevie to figure out where retracements are coming from. So let's go move over and take a look at uh, Wood for Tom C. And Tom wants to know where all of the profiles and the oscillator and change line levels are out there. I believe Wood is an ETF. If I'm not mistaken, that is the Global Timber Forestry ETF. And uh, right now, this thing has been moving lower. So all I can give you on the daily time frame is resistance. Write these down. 78.42 is the first one. Bottom of the profile. 79.16 is the second one. That's the center of the profile. That's also right now where the oscillator and change line is printing. And the third one is at 79.53. That's your daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, support was at 78.90. If you close below that, you close below it last week. If you close below it again this week, it tells us about a weekly profile change in trend. And that suggests that we go target its most recent swing point low. That would take us back to the week that ended. Uh, February 9th. That price level would be between 73.83 and 75.90. If I look at the uh, uh, the next level of support, if price were to close below that, would be its breakout level at 70.37. That's the weekly time frame. So you're trading below support out there. You don't have to worry about resistance because we're trading below support. So I'm not going to give you those levels out there. Well, I did on the daily time frame. I gave you resistance on any kind of rallies out there. If we look at the monthly time frame, it is trading below that green oscillator and change line. So it has lost this momentum, this momentum that has been in place for the last two, four, six, seven months out there. So this is telling us it's kind of tired. It's really reflective of what we just looked at on the weekly chart. Now the daily time frame chart is going to go ahead and, t and, and negate a TD9 count top today as long as price closes below 7805. So that's something there at 7803. I don't know where it's going to close, but if it does close below uh, 7805 out there, it negates that signal. What happens if it closes above 7805? Well then, you still have a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. So watch that 78 805 number today like hawk you close below it it's really adding to the idea that wood which is the uh, iShares global timber and forestry etf wants to continue to move lower so hope that helps you out thanks much for the request out there let's go to our next request coming in from mcguppy inside the tiger's den and mcguppy would like to take a look at hrtx hrtx trading right now at about three dollars and 17 cents and it's going to go ahead likely well, I can't say that. It's going to form bar number eight today, very likely. The question is, will it form bar number nine? In order to form bar number nine, price tomorrow would need to close below 323. So we've got a rally that's going on right now. It's at 317. Um, if we take that's in the daily time frame. So let's come back. We'll come back to the daily. Uh, your question is, will it bounce from here? And so. Um, we haven't answered that question just yet. I don't have a bottom pattern. Uh, we see that prices test rejected yesterday's low, so we've already got a little bit of bounce. We'll go take those intraday charts out there uh, for you. But let's finish off, take a look at the weekly. Weekly chart, roads to indicator top, trading with inside its bullish structured profile, but below its oscillator and change line. So it's suggesting to you and I, McGuppy, 277 is where price would want to move to. Um, and that's short of a TD9 count bottom pattern forming which it may do tomorrow. So I've given you the price level that you need to see on tomorrow's close. Today's close, by the way, would need to be a close below 327. Uh, so if it rallies up to 327, the TD9 count pattern, if it closes above 327, the TD9 count pattern just simply goes away out there. On a monthly time frame, everything here looks pretty good. When I say pretty good, you closed above last month, the top of its profile. So looks like it wants to rally further. But I don't think the monthly is driving the train here. I really think it is the daily that is the one that's driving the train. Well, what's the 30-minute time frame chart doing? You know, McGuppy, that's an excellent question. Let's go take a look at that. 
And we take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart. It's got one of your favorite patterns, one of Stevie's favorite patterns, and that's that TD9 count and Rhodes Momentum Indicator pattern out there. It formed uh, the PD9 count on the bar following bar number nine. That was at 10 o'clock. And then at 10 30, it confirmed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Your question is is this going to rally further? That was the intraday signal that it is. Where is it going to run into resistance? That's pretty easy, $3.20. We were at 3 19 just a moment ago. The question is, will price take out 3 20 No clue out here. Now, on a 30-minute basis, that bar that's moving into at 12 noon, back on June 25th, had volume of 81,000 shares. So far right now, you are at 71,000 shares, and you've got 10 minutes to go out there. Still, 3 20 is the level you're going to watch. If price can close above 3 20 then what you're likely going to have is a further rally. So I hope that helps you out with regard to HRTX. Let's uh, move over real quickly and uh, pull up S. RPT, Sarepta Therapeutics out there. Uh, this has uh, been a long time since we've taken a look at this, but as we do, what, what do we see out here? I don't know, but we'll figure that out as soon as we come back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking the Sarepta Therapeutics, SRPT. This is for Lars uh, inside the uh, Tiger's Den. So 
First of all, let's take a look at what the uh, weekly chart is telling you. So longer term, what SRPT did last week is it confirmed an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. If we take a look at the B point out here, Lars, that was from May 10th. And that weekly volume was 6.4 million shares. Last week when it was passed, it was passed with 20 million shares. So odds favor that this wants to make a move up to the $200 level. Now, I haven't measured what this uh, uh, B to C retracement is, but it ain't a 6.8, 6, a 61.8% retracement. Looks like more of a 0 0.382 retracement. You know what that means? That means longer term, intermediate term. This wants to make a move even greater than the 200 bucks out there. I believe it was Bud Rolfs back in the day uh, who was, um, if I'm not mistaken, maybe it was he and his son that were uh, that were purchasing Sarepta Therapeutics. And I remember, if I'm not mistaken, it was in the $4 range out there. And uh, now I don't know that, uh, you know, anybody's still in that position, but this thing is certainly a rocket ship. Now, what's it doing on the daily time frame? The daily time frame had a gigantic gap. And that gap out here was on the trading day. So I'm not sure what they cured, but certainly they cured something or had a good result out there. And there was a big gap. The volume on that gap out there was 15 million shares. So that's where last week's volume was really coming from. Uh, just that one single day. Now, price is trading. And the gap is very, very large out here. And the question is, will will this gap get filled? So what I'm going to do for you, Lars, is, and I'll do this uh, sometime this afternoon, is I'm going to put up the chart for Sarepta Therapeutics for its daily time frame. I don't have time to do that now. And go back and see if Sarepta Therapeutics has open gaps out there. Because isn't that really the question out there? Is price going to pull back? Which would be a gigantic pullback. And I don't know if it's going to do that or not. So let's just you and I and everybody else, let's take a look at historical date out here. By the way, where could price pull back to and find support? Without even closing the gap, it'd be about 139.89. But I don't have a top or anything like that that I can see on the daily time frame. So tomorrow, I will come back to you. We'll take a look at Sarepta Therapeutics, and we'll see if this stock has a bunch of open gaps or if its gaps up end up being filled over time. Folks, have a wonderful Wednesday. Stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll look forward to being back with you tomorrow at 11 a.m. sharp. Have a great day. Be safe out there.